Stay all day though. Now tuned into the show. You learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get to use those of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques and mentalities all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, standards still matter. Even though I know that some people may be trying to uh, tell you or teach you or sell you on the concept that standards should not be standards anymore because maybe they are uh, going against whatever uh, group you may identify with or whatever you may come from or that they may be uh, that certain standards may be biased towards certain people to favor certain individuals over other individuals or certain groups over other groups i am here to let you know bullshit standards still matter and i'm gonna explain exactly why that is here today now before i get into it let me tell everybody i send out a daily motivation text message every single day that i want you to receive and here's what i need you to do to help me help you with that text message, I need you to text me and confirm that you want to receive it by texting me at the following number, 305-384-6894. Once you text me at that number, you'll be in my texting community. You'll receive my daily motivation text every single day, straight to your phone, free of charge, guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point every single day or your money back. Now, getting it, oh yeah, that number once again, 305-384-6894. Now, this topic of standards still matter. I've talked about standards in the past on this show, and those of you who are new understand everything that I talk about here, I will talk about more than once. So if any of you ever think, damn, Dre said that before, he's repeating himself, or any of you ever think, Dre talked about this topic before, he's talking about it again from a little bit different angle, or you ever think to yourself, damn, Dre has talked about this one multiple times, because I remember the last time he talked about it, you are absolutely right on all three fronts. That is exactly what I do. I will talk about the same topics over and over and over again. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be no, no, running out of material, but I will come from different angles on the same topic multiple times. Why? Several reasons. Number one, we call it spaced repetition, that hearing some, one thing one time is not enough to get most human beings to take action. For example, how many times have you had to tell somebody the same thing over and over and over again before they finally took action on the thing that you knew was the right thing for them to understand or do the first time you told them? But it wasn't until the 20th time that they heard it that they finally did something that you said, yo, I told you that a long time ago. Has that ever happened to you? Of course it has. Has ever, anyone ever done it to you? Of course they have. How many times have you told somebody something that was accurate, true, and factual, and they didn't do anything about the information then? You heard them get the same information from a different person, the exact same thing that you said, and they acted like it was some kind of light bulb moment, then the skies just parted, and they finally just got the information. And you said to them, mofo, I said that to you three weeks ago. And that happened, right? That's happened to you before, right? Of course it has. And guess what? Other people have said the same thing when you got information from somebody else, and they said, yo, I told you the same thing a long time ago. How many times when you were in kindergarten did you say the ABCs in kindergarten class? More times than you can count, which is why when I mention ABCs right now, you know the tune of that song and you can sing it right now in your sleep. Why is that? Because you did it over and over and over again. So when I repeat myself, when I talk about similar topics more than once, when I say I've talked about this subject before and I refer to you five, 10, 20 different episodes where I referred to it before, that is on purpose. That is on purpose because human beings like you and me, we have hard heads. What does that mean? does not mean that the, the bones in our skulls are very dense and thick, even though they are. What I mean by this metaphorically is that human beings need to hear the same thing more than once before it actually gets through and before we actually do something about it slash with it. This applies to you. It applies to me. It applies to smart people, stupid people, action taking people, lazy people. All humans are susceptible to this and that we have to hear things more than once before we do something with it. So. Anytime I tell you I've talked about this before, that's on purpose. And yes, I have talked about it before. And let me tell you something about this subject that I'm talking about here today. I guarantee you I will talk about this again in the future. So when I told you I talked about standards before, episode 1974, I told you that standards are the enemy of mediocrity. In episode number 1331, I told you never lower the bar when you set standards. In episode 1291, I told you how to raise the standards of any group of which you are a part. In episode 1026, I told you that your standard is the best that you can possibly do. These still matter. 
And just in case any of you were starting to think or believe or allowing yourself to be indoctrinated into the idea that standards should not exist because they are working against certain people or certain groups or certain situations, I'm telling you that that is not true and I'm gonna fight against that idea in your head here today. Definition of a standard. So we're all on the same page of what I'm talking about when I say standard is an idea or thing used as a measure, norm, or model in comparative evaluations, close quote. As much as some people are trying, for whatever reason, doesn't matter why they're doing it, it's the fact that they are doing it, trying to toss standards aside, we will not allow this to happen. Standards do matter, they have mattered, they will matter. And today I'm gonna to explain to you why. Point number one, today's topic once again, standards still matter. Number one, there's a lot of talk these days about movements for quote, change, close quote. All right, everybody here is about people talking about these, we wanna make change, or we're all in the, the movement for change. We wanna make change happen. I told you in episode 1182, stop trying to change people because it's probably not gonna work. I told you in 1277, it's easier to change yourself than it is to change other people. And the real thing that you need to understand about change is that change begins and ends with you. That's episode 2004. Whenever you hear somebody talking about change, I want you to listen to what they're actually saying. And then if you can, get some specifics from that person about what kind of changes they're talking about. And here's the interesting thing you're gonna notice about most of the people you hear preaching about change. All they're preaching about change is about what everybody and everything else needs to do. None of it is about what they need to do or what they're gonna do. And I want you to listen closely. Next time you hear somebody talking about change, all the change that they're talking about has, they are not responsible for any other change. All the change that they want is what somebody else needs to do. Or what at the world needs to change around them, but they're not gonna make any change themselves. Michael Jackson had a song called Man in the Mirror. You know what he says in that song? He says, if you wanna make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. So Michael Jackson was uh, pre, pre-dating the Work On Your Game podcast when he made that song back in the 1980s. A lot of people talking about change, either they don't have specifics or even when they do, all their specifics are about externalities. And if you don't remember my episode on externalities, that was episode number 1879. Externalities are not excuses. In other words, if things are not working correctly in your situation right now, the first thing you need to look at and the last thing you need to look at is what you can do and how you can make edits to your process and to yourself. And it's not because you are the only issue. It is not because you are a problem, not because anything's wrong with you. Maybe things are not working simply because there is something outside of you that is an issue. And I accept that sometimes that is the situation. Okay, so I'm not telling you that you're the, the the bottom line and 100% of every problem that ever exists in your life. Sometimes the problem is another person. Sometimes the problem is the situation. Sometimes the problem is the weather. Sometimes you are living in the wrong city. Sometimes you do have the wrong people around you. These are all true. Here's the issue with that being the main thing is that you can't control those things all the time. You cannot control other people. You cannot always control circumstances. You can't control the weather. You can't control what other people think, do, or say, but you can control yourself. This is why we always start in with ourselves and every subject that we talk about here, work on your game, because it's the only thing that we have 100% control over. Therefore, if we decide that all of our problems are based on this thing outside of us and we can't change that thing, then we just got to sit there with that problem for the rest of our lives. And that's the problem. That is problematic to have that kind of mindset. So if you came here with that mindset, you will not leave with it or you will leave very quickly and you can keep it. A lot of talk these days with people about change, none of it that they need to do, and usually not very specific. It seems a lot of the change that people want these days, it appears, is the removal of standards. A lot of standards are being removed. When I've talked about masculinity on this show, I talked about how we bring masculinity back, back in episode 1863, and in episode 1841, three weeks earlier, I told you about how men are being emasculated, the emasculation of men. I also told you how there are times when you want to engage your toxic masculinity. That was episode 1744. We are removing masculinity standards for men. Now we got men who decide they can just wake up one day and decide that they're a woman. Are uh, you seen this? I think everybody knows about this. There is, or well, maybe not you know, any specific situations, but we know that this is a, a thing that people are trying to push now. People are even pushing the idea that a man can be, a man can be pregnant. I was, I was listening to someone speak. This was in person, not too long ago. It was a woman who works in the area of, uh, she works in the area of helping people give birth. And she specific, I specifically remember her using the phrase birthing person. That's what she said. She was talking about something else, 
but she said the word, she said the phrase birthing person. And I remember hearing her say, I didn't, I didn't call her out on it. I didn't say anything, but I just remember her saying that. And I'm like, birthing person, really? But this is the, this is the kind of things that people are doing these days. People are saying that, people are certain that a man can have a baby. A man cannot have a baby. All right, if you have a baby, you're a woman. All right, I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care how you dress. If you give birth to a baby, you are a woman. But anyway, there's this guy right now, actually, I guess it's insensitive for me to call him a guy. Maybe it's verbal violence. Uh, his name is Leah Thomas. And Leah is swimming for the University of Pennsylvania. And Leah is swimming at the University of Pennsylvania as a female. And this is probably not a big deal. Who, If you're not in the swimming world, which I am not, maybe you don't even care about this, but let me tell you why this is a thing and why I'm bringing it up right now. Leah Thomas used to be a man. All right, Leah for three years was on the swim team at the University of Pennsylvania and I believe Leah's name before becoming Leah, well, I don't even remember, I can't even, I don't even see it. I'm looking at the story right now. I don't see what the name was before. I think the name might have been Matt, but it doesn't matter. For three years, Leah was on the men's swim team at the University of Pennsylvania, which is a D1 college. Now, it's not the, the strongest swim program in the country, but it's a very strong swim team. Was swimming as a man for three years on a male swim team, then uh, transitioned to become a female. So the male became a woman. And now Leah's on a swim team at the University of Pennsylvania and is kicking everybody's ass. <laughs> Leah is just dominating in swimming because Leah has the genetics of a man and is dominating these females in swimming. And here's the thing that happened. The swimmers at the University of Pennsylvania, many of them have anonymously, because a lot of them don't want to come out and say anything because in this woke world and college campuses are one of the wokest places in the world, they don't want to come out and say anything because they will be ostracized, they might get kicked off the team, they're going to get their name smeared all over the place, and these are young people who are, haven't even started their adult lives yet. They don't want to get canceled for saying the wrong thing about the wrong person in the wrong group at the wrong time. But they're out there swimming with this person who's dominating them and they don't even have a chance to win these races because Leah's out there just dominating them. They're, it's like swimming against a man. Now, this is the kind of thing that nobody's speaking up about. Actually, let me not say nobody because I'm speaking about it and there are other people speaking about it. But a lot of the mainstream opinions and ideas, nobody's saying anything against this and nobody's speaking Many people are just saying nothing at all. They're not saying anything in support, but they're not saying anything against. They're just trying to you know, save their spaces. And this is the kind of thing that it's a standard. And the reason why I'm bringing this episode up and the episode on standards is because a male is a male and a female is a female. I talked about this in the episode on is Dre liberal or conservative. If you didn't hear that episode, that was episode 2027. And that there are certain standards that need to be upheld. And there are certain standards that this is just the straight baseline, this is what it is, and this is how things need to be seen. And I think there are a lot of people here who understand this. Some of you are willing to talk about it, and many of you are not. And as I've said in many episodes here on this show in the past, when I've talked about these topics that could be hot button issues, I understand that some of you don't have the space to say something about this. Maybe you don't have the platform, maybe because of the position that you hold or the people that you're around, it would not be beneficial and it would not be it wouldn't make sense for you to say anything. You wouldn't gain anything by saying something. You might be able to get something off your chest, but it's actually gonna help you make money. It's gonna help your career. Maybe not, it might hurt you. And you're not saying anything and I get it. I'm not mad at you for that, but I will say something. And you can give me your implicit agreement by just continuing to listen to the show. I don't need you to say anything. I'll say it. And this is the reason why I got the microphone. This is the reason why I created the platform. These kind of standards need to be upheld and people need to be willing to speak out against them speak out about them rather. And I understand at the same time that some people don't want to because maybe they feel like they have too much to lose if and when they do. But those of you out there, you males out there who are listening to this, if you have a daughter and your daughter goes to play a sport and now your daughter is on her way to a chance to maybe win a championship or compete at a certain level and then she goes to a meet and you go there to watch your daughter compete and now at any sport and now she's getting her ass kicked by a fellow female, quote unquote, who was just a year ago, a male competing in the same sport against men. Now this human is competing against females as a woman and kicking your daughter's ass in the sport because they have the genetics of a man. How would you feel about that? What would you do? What would you say? What would you tell your daughter? And these are questions that maybe this seems like a radical hypothetical, but it's not a radical hypothetical. This is really fucking happening in real life right now in America. And 
As we move on, any of you who has a daughter who's under the age of 10, or where do you think things are gonna be 10 years from now? When your daughter actually is in high school or college and possibly is playing a sport and competing and things like this, what do you think is gonna happen? Is this something for you to, something for you to chew on as we continue, I'm still, on top, I'm still on point number one of this topic, which is standards still matter. These days we're not even having as many legal standards as we've had in the past. And this is another one that I've talked about before. Any of you heard my episodes where I talked about how we could actually reform police. All right, when, why would it actually make sense to defund police? And you need to listen to that whole episode in context so you know what I'm talking about when I say that. I do not actually believe in defunding the police, but listen to that episode and I'll tell you why it could make sense on some levels and how it could be useful in a way that you probably weren't thinking about. But when we talk about legal standards, these days you hear a lot of people talking about criminal justice reform. That's a, a common buzz phrase that people like, like to throw out, right? What is it really about? When you hear people talk about criminal justice reform, what are they saying? People are saying we need to reform what we do with criminals. And if you actually look at the phrase, it's justice for criminals. So someone commits a crime and they are factually a criminal. We need to reform the way that we give justice to those people. But you notice that there's no there's no movement for victim justice reform. And I don't mean victim as in victim mentality, but I mean the person who was victimized by that criminal, there's no movement to make sure that they get justice, but there's a movement to get justice for the person who committed the crime. Are we putting the focus in the right place? This is just an open question that I'm asking. So we wanna make sure that we're taking care of the criminals and making sure that they're getting everything they're supposed to get. What about the person that that criminal victimized? What about the family of the dead person that that criminal killed? What about the person who got their house burglarized or their car stolen by that criminal, where's the movement to make sure we take care of that person? I'm just asking, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with making sure that criminals are not being railroaded by the system and not being done wrong by the system because they are still humans and they do still have rights. However, why is there no movement for the people that they victimized? Why is there only a movement for the criminal themselves? Do you notice that a lot of cities, depending on where you live, might be the city that you live in, a lot of cities are saying, you know what, we're gonna stop prosecuting crimes that are not serious crimes. So if you shoplift from the CVS or Walgreens, we're not gonna prosecute that. You might get arrested, but we're gonna let you out of jail and it's just gonna be pretty much over. We're not gonna take you to trial. We're not gonna do any of that. These cities are actually doing this right now. I don't know if y'all watch the news. I don't watch the news. I actually look at, I get my news from other sources. I get my news from sources of people who are, they are, not filtered by their jobs or positions from saying what they actually want to say and sharing things that people might not want you to talk about when it comes to, when I say people, I mean the mainstream narrative. I don't watch news networks, I only own the TV. But if you are not paying attention to these things, these are the kind of things that are happening where standards are not only being lowered, but they're being completely removed. And this is going to touch you in some way. So if you're not noticing these things, I'm bringing them to your attention all under the umbrella at the same point. We're still on point number one here, the same topic rather. We're still on point number one here that a lot of standards are just being removed because, uh, I don't know, you tell me. Why are people wanting to remove standards everywhere in life? The definitions of words are being just changed blatantly. Performance standards in schools, they wanna lower performance standards in schools. So schools are saying, okay, well, children in this group are getting lower test scores than children in this group, so, that test, we need to eliminate that test because obviously there's something wrong with the test, but nobody's asking the question, well, what about if this group is simply not doing the same things to prepare that this group is? I talked about this in the four part series I did when I talked about Ibram Kendi's book on anti-racism, which was episodes number 1788 through 1791, four part series, that we're just eliminating standards anywhere that certain people or certain groups are not getting a certain result or where there's a big gap between different groups, or right, let's just eliminate that standard altogether and let's just see what happens then. All right, but actually nobody even cares what happens then, they just wanna remove the standard. Why? Again, somebody else, somebody who's smarter than me can answer that question. We even changed the standards on what a, on what a vaccine is. All right, you look at the definition of vaccine, you look at the definition of the word vaccine, and then you tell me if whatever's being thrown out these days, whatever people are taking in their arms these days, and again, I'm not mad at you if you got it, I'm not mad at you if you don't, but you look at the definition of the word and then ask yourself, is what people are talking about now an actual vaccine? You look at the definition, I don't think there's any way you could have but one answer to that question. But anyway, let's move on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is standards still matter. Number two, whether you agree with the changes that I have brought up here or whatever other changes that you have noticed, whether you agree with them or not is not the point. 
at least not in today's episode. The point is that the removal of standards will eventually descend society into chaos. That is the problem with removing standards. You see what standards are really, what standards really are, folks? Standards are like the guardrails of society. And standards are the guardrails of any ecosystem. They're the guardrails of any community. For example, when I played on a, a basketball team in college, the coach says, okay, be at, be at practice and be on the floor 15 minutes before practice starts. That was a standard. It was a guardrail for the way things worked. When we got in the, court, in the gym at practice at that school with that particular coach, he said, all right, everybody tuck your jerseys in. He gave all of us shorts and a jersey uh, for practice every day. He said, okay, every day at practice, you wear your practice shorts and your practice jerseys. They would wash them, then we would get them. We had to wear that at practice. You couldn't just wear any pair of shorts or any shirt. You had to wear exactly what he said. Don't wear jewelry to practice. These are all standards. And the coach told me before the school year started, I'm gonna be walking past, me and other coaches will walk past your classrooms while you're in class. You better be sitting in the first three rows of every class. Don't sit in the back of the classroom. Now, why? He gave a reason for that, but it doesn't even matter. The whole point was he was setting standards. He was giving us guardrails. This is the way that you're going to conduct yourself. Now, why does that matter? Even if you disagree with the standards, why does it matter that the standards exist? Because the standards create discipline. The standards create a baseline for everyone to follow. And if everyone's following the same baseline, then you can start to get the duplicatable results because you're, you have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Duplicatable processes, predictable results because you have the same inputs happening over and over and over again. Consistent is the word. Consistent inputs, duplicatable processes lead to predictable results. When everybody's doing the same thing the same way every time, you get duplicatable, predictable results. This is why standards exist. This is why businesses have standards. This is why the military has standards. This is why maybe you and your family, you may have standards. If you're a head of household, you might have standards for how things go in your house. When you were a kid, your parents might have had standards for how things went when you were a kid. And what do those standards do? Even if you disagree with the standards, the point of the standard is to make sure everybody's on the same page in specific areas of how things are going. That is the purpose of having standards. And when you remove standards and there are no standards, what you get is chaos. Nobody has a standard. There's no baseline. People just do whatever they want. Do as thou wilt. You get chaos eventually. This is one of the... This is one of the laws of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, that any entity will eventually descend into a state of disorder if there are no guardrails, if there is no control to the situation, if no one is touching it and just leaving it as it is. That's what happens when there's no standards. Standards are a compass for behavior. They are guardrails for behavior, performance, and accountability. When you have no standards, people go crazy, societies go crazy. Any of you growing up as a kid, do any of you know a kid who, let's say, let's take somebody like myself. When I grew up, I had two parents at home. Every day, I saw both of my parents. And I knew kids who grew up with either only one parent or maybe they didn't even have either of their parents at home. Maybe they were being raised by a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a grandma. They didn't have the same standards in their home. They didn't have the same guardrails around their behavior that I had. So at times, it looked like they had a little bit more fun because they had more leeway and more freedom to do what they wanted. But at the same time, a lot of those kids who I knew of who didn't have those guardrails that I had, they eventually found themselves in some states of chaos at different times. Why? Because they didn't have the guardrails around them. Has any of you ever seen something like that? Maybe some of you are listening was one of those people. And you know what I'm talking about now. And you probably wouldn't allow your kids to get into that same state that you were in, even though it's what you went through. When there are no standards, things go crazy. You know why I talk about discipline so much on the show and why I open the show talking about the discipline to show up every day after day to do the work? Because I grew up in a home where discipline was demanded every day. That standard of discipline ensured that I showed up a certain way. Then I took that standard of discipline that was applied to things like, you know, go to bed at this time, get up, go to school, you know, get good grades, you know, behave in class, et cetera, so do your chores, get a job when you're 15, 16 years old. Those standards that were imposed upon me that I might not have even enjoyed that much as a kid, when I went to play sports, I applied those same standards, the mindset standards, to myself playing sports. And that's how I got good enough to, come, to become a pro, even though I came from a very humble background as an athlete. 
And then when I went to the business world, I took those same standards that I had applied in sports that clearly worked for me and I applied them to business. And that's how I got to where I'm at right now and you listen to the show. Even though I was not groomed to be an athlete, I was not groomed to be an entrepreneur, I became both because I applied the standards of discipline that I learned from being at home. Because those standards were in place, I took the same principles, applied it to other disciplines, and I was able to create results. Sports is the best experience for many of us, any of you who is an athlete or a former athlete or any coaches who are listening to this, and I know I have a lot of sports related people listening to this show, because our coaches and our trainers and our teammates when we play sports, even our opponents represent standards for us. Because if you're not at level X, you either won't play, or B, you won't be on the team, or C, you will play and you'll get your ass kicked if your standards aren't high enough. I wrote about this in my book, Work On Your Game. I played at Division Three College. Because of my athletic ability, I was better than most of the players on my campus. So me and a few teammates who were serious about basketball, we started going to other campuses and playing basketball with the D1 players at other campuses. And one day I was, we were playing with some guys and they had some athletic guys on their team and I tried to dunk on one of these guys. He blocked my dunk so easy. I realized, okay, the standards here are different than the standards where I'm from. Because where the school that I go to, nobody's even challenging me when I go up for a dunk. But here, I go up for a dunk, he blocked it like I wasn't even there. The standards are different. And when I realized that, I realized I needed to raise my own standards that my game's gonna be good enough to compete against players like him at the next level, being the pro level. Those standards and me realizing those standards were me realizing that the standards were different in different places helped me step my own game up and that helped me get better. Now, if I didn't have the discipline that I got from back home to be able to even think like that, I might have made the mistake of thinking, oh, well, he just got lucky blocking my dunk or that won't happen again. Let me just do the same thing again and expect a different result. Definition of insanity. But because I had the discipline instilled in me, I was able to look at myself in the mirror and say, all right, what can I do about this situation? So you see how all this comes full circle and comes right back to the same point? And this is why sports is so good for anybody, even if you don't want to become a pro athlete, it's having those standards in place. Standards keep us in line as athletes. Standards keep us in line at work. Standards keep us in line in everything we do, in society in general. But again, in society, there are a lot of standards that are being removed. All humans need to be kept in line by something. I'll say that again. All humans need to be kept in line by something. Why? Because of the law of entropy, things descend into chaos when there is, when there are no standards. See episode number 1986, where I talked about your personal and professional culture. What does that mean? When I say your culture, I mean your standards. Down here in Miami, where I live, the basketball team here is called the Miami Heat. Anybody who follows the NBA knows that the Heat are famous for having what they call heat culture. What is heat culture? Heat culture is set by the team president, a guy by the name of Pat Riley, who won a bunch of championships as a coach. And one of the things that Pat Riley is about is our team is going to be the meanest, toughest, nastiest, hardest playing team. We want to be the most disliked team. We want to be the type of team that other teams don't want to play against us because they know it's going to be a rough night. Even if they win, they're going to leave with a bloody nose, metaphorically speaking. That's the kind of culture that the Miami Heat want to set. And they have that kind of culture. And certain type of players can't play for the team because they don't have that as a personal culture and they're not able to adapt to it. Culture keeps people in line. Culture is a standard that you have for yourself. What is your personal culture? If you don't have any, you should go listen to episode 1986 where I help you develop one. What you're about and what you're not about. That was, those are your standards. And as the saying goes, if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. Point number three, today's topic once again is standards still matter. Nobody succeeds in life without standards, accountability, and discipline. Let me say that one more time. Nobody succeeds in life without standards, accountability, and discipline. Nobody. What perplexes me these days is that I see so many people, and this is an idea that has continued to uh, perplex me. So many people who have created success already, athletes at the professional level, politicians who have been elected, celebrities who have noted success, public, publicly noted success, advocating for the removal of standards as if those very standards are not the reason that that person has succeeded up to this point. Standards are what help people succeed because they give you guardrails and they tell you what you have to live up to in order to get to whatever level you're going to. 
This is something that I've been saying for years. There are people who have succeeded by having standards in place, and then when they reach success, they start looking back at you down at the bottom of the ladder after they climbed up to the top and tell you, hey, you don't need standards. All right, you, you don't need to follow the program that I follow to become successful. You need to follow a different program to become successful, which makes no sense to me. Which means either these people are uh, just blatantly, maliciously lying to you or they're idiots who don't quite understand. And it's possible they're somewhere in between. But I'm thinking it might be on one extreme or another. I don't know. Somebody fill me in. And then people will angrily defend the same people who are giving you the bad failure inducing advice. And I just don't understand this. I'll give you an example. Colin Kaepernick is a person that everybody knows who he is. NFL, former NFL quarterback, took a knee during 2016 preseason. And he wanted to protest uh, black bodies in the streets and the way black people have been treated by the United States of America. Fine. That's what he wants to do. He has every right to do so. Now, Colin Kaepernick, many people probably know, but some of you might not know. He was, he's a mixed, mixed race person, black father, white mother, allegedly. And because people have said, at least the story goes, he never actually met his father, doesn't know exactly who his father is, but there's an idea who it is. He was given up for adoption when he was born. He was adopted by a white family. You can look up pictures of him standing with the white family who adopted him. And this white family, and this is not in any way negative, he was adopted. This is a great thing, right? This is a, this is a, he's a success story of the adoption system because he made it to the NFL, made a lot of money, became famous. He got adopted by a white family. They gave him a home. They raised him well. They supported his football ambitions. He became an NFL quarterback, made a whole bunch of money. Now, what does he do? Just last year, a series comes out on Netflix that was made by Mr. Kaepernick himself. And in this series, there's a part of the series where he's making his white adoptive parents really look bad because there's this part where he comes home with a black girl that he was dating and it made his parents seem very kind of racially insensitive. And this was a, it was a dramatization, but it was based on his life. So it's not like this is some random story. This is based on his life and things that happen in his own life. Another thing that he does Aside from making his adoptive parents look bad, the very people who gave him an opportunity in life when his own parents, a black man and a white woman, did not want to give him that opportunity. They gave him up. They, or at least they didn't want to give opportunity through him, through them, rather. They gave him up. These white parents gave him an opportunity, supported his ambitions. Then he makes them look bad in this series. Then what else does he do? He has a, a scene in this series that he put out on Netflix where he is drawing a parallel between the NFL draft combine where players get poked and prodded and examined so that they can be you know, looked at for you know, how qualified is this guy to play in the NFL. He draws a parallel to that in the uh, African slave trade. That he's like, this is no different than, he didn't say it in so many words, but actually he almost did, is that this is similar to when slaves were held up at auction to be auctioned off to a, a slave owner to go work on a plantation. That's what the NFL draft is like. This is the parallel that Colin Kaepernick is drawing. The NFL is the very thing that made Colin Kaepernick known. These white parents are the very people who gave you an opportunity to make it to the NFL. And these are the people that you want to make look bad in your docu-series. These are the people who wanted you when your black side, i.e. your father, left you abandoned. The NFL are the people who put money in your pocket. But he doesn't even acknowledge that Half of his heritage is white because everything he talks about is how you know, the white man is bad and how terrible it is for black people. Like, dudes, you're only half black. Yeah, half of you is white. So do you want to even want to acknowledge this? That the NFL is the only reason we know this guy's name, but now he wants to bash the NFL through Netflix. The very things that made him somebody, he's bashing. I attest that this is not a formula for success, but many people want to have you believe that it is. It is not a formula for success to take the very things that help you become successful and then once you get to the top of the ladder, bash all the things that help you get there. All right, this is not a formula for success. Even though his example might make you think that this works, this does not work. Most people who try to do what he's doing, they fail. And I'm bringing him up as an example because this is, this is something that all of you might have a pretty good idea who this person is. I can come up with other examples that you, you won't know who I'm talking about, but everybody knows who this is. And this is, again, his situation is just a microcosm that drives home the point of everything that I'm talking about here. So let me recap 
today's class, which says standards still matter. See these episodes that I link down below about standards. The definition of a standard is an idea or a thing uses a measure, norm, or model in comparative evaluations. Many people are trying to toss standards aside, but we will not allow that to happen. Point number one, there are many, there's many talk these days, talks these days about movements for change. And almost everybody who wants to talk about change is talking about removing standards. Masculinity is not a standard anymore. A man can become a, become a woman. I'm just waiting for the first man to, to retire from the NBA and sign up for the WNBA. I want to see what people say about that. Legal standards. Everybody wants to make sure we're taking care of the criminals. What about the people that got criminalized by those criminals? What about that? Definitions of words being changed blatantly. In schools, they want to change standards simply because one group or one person is not performing at a certain level. That means the standards are wrong. Maybe it means that person needs to step their game up and you know work on their fucking game. Maybe, just possible. Point number two. Whether you agree with the changes or not, the removal of standards will descend into chaos. That is what's going to happen whether you want that to happen or not. This is why we need to uphold standards. Standards are a compass for behavior. They are guardrails for performance and accountability and the way that we act. When there are no standards, things go crazy. The reason your host talks about standards so much is because I had standards imposed upon me as a child at home. I took those same standards to the basketball court, took those standards to the business world, and that's how we got to where we are today. <coughs> Excuse me, not because I just made up my own rules whenever I felt like it. That would not work. And I know a lot of people who lived that way, and that was not a winning formula for them. I know way too many examples. Standards are what keep us in line. And every human being needs to be kept in line by something because the law of thermodynamics says, the law of entropy, you will descend into chaos if there is no control. Point number three, nobody succeeds in life without standards, accountability, and discipline. Nobody. But many people have created success and then they advocate for the removal of accountability, standards and discipline, even though those are the exact things that made them successful in the first place. So either these people are maliciously trying to keep you from meeting them at the top and becoming successful along with them by telling you the exact opposite of what will help you create success or they're so they are so shallow to not even understand that the standards are the very things that make that make people successful and they're giving you bad advice because they don't even know they're giving you bad advice but i unfortunately think that they know exactly what they're doing they're just following what everybody else is doing being mental sheep and i got an episode talking about sheep as well so this whole situation of people wanting to remove standards the next time you see it the next time you hear it pay attention to it notice it and you don't have to you know, rail against it or speak out about it or make a podcast episode about it. I already did that in your stead, so you don't have to. But understand that standards do matter. If you don't have standards in place in any aspect of your life, I guarantee you that aspect of your life is descending into chaos. Look at your own life right now and tell me that I'm wrong. Text me at this number, 305-384-6894, and tell me, is there any area of your life in which there are no standards, but everything's going perfectly? It doesn't exist. If you look at any area of your life where things are not working, if you're not making the kind of money you want to make, if your relationship's not going the way that you want it to go, if people are not dealing with you on a level that you want to be dealt with, if you're not, if your body is not in the kind of shape that you want to be in, if you're not performing athletically the way that you want to, if your, your brand is not gaining the kind of steam and attention that you want it to gain, I guarantee you one of the main reasons is that there are no standards, there's no discipline in place, and there's no accountability for the way that you are doing things, and that's why you have chaos, you have entropy. Things are going all over the place and you have no control over it because the standards do not exist. When you put standards in place, things start working. I guarantee you this works. So text me at my number, again, 305-384-6894, even if you don't have that uh, answer for me, but you will get my daily motivation by texting me at that number. And if you want to get standards in place, when it comes to your mindset, when it comes to your business, when it comes to accountability, when it comes to the way that you show up strategically, join my Bulletproof Mastermind where we will make sure you get your standards in place, your processes in place, your disciplines in place so that you can get things going the way that they're supposed to go in a duplicatable, predictable way. That is at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.